Thank you again to Hunter Tools and Thompson Tools for supporting our YouTube channel. Please support the companies that are helping us uh, keep these videos going. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel again. Um, today I'm going to uh, tackle a, uh, the sharpening subject a little bit. Uh, I've got a uh, uh, YouTube clip that I've posted uh, about three years ago that has uh, a lot of detail in it, but uh, I've had a lot of questions about sharpening lately and the old one, even though it's gotten thousands of views, uh, I'm going to condense it down and try to uh, just give you the essence of sharpening here so uh, you can do it, uh, look at it quick and easy and uh, see my sharpening process and, and some of the rules involved there. So uh, stay tuned, let's get started. Okay, sharpening is really all about repeatability. We want to sharpen quick and easy and accurate so we have to go back at the grinding wheel at exactly the same angles that we had it before so setup is really important and we want to get the uh, the grinding jig set up the first thing we're going to set up is the distance away from the tip that we have the jig Ooh, look at here, red on red doesn't go too well, but we'll, we'll see it later. Okay, so let's get a close-up of how we're going to get it set up here. So I've developed a little V-block situation here so that when you put the bowl gouge in it, it's lining itself up. It's got a, a ridge to, to follow, a, a groove to follow, and you push it up against the end, and you move the, the jig up to it to tighten it so that that's repeatable. It's got to be perfectly, exactly the same as it was last time so that I don't have to grind a whole bunch of metal away. If I don't have an accurate way to set this, then it's just a line on a table or something like that. It's not going to be as accurate. Then I got to grind a bunch of metal away to get it down to the edge again. All right, so we set up, in my case, this is two inches, but it really doesn't matter. It's all about repeatability got to be the same as it was the last time. All right, so now we have it set up accurately the distance from the jig out to the tip. Now we need to set the tip angle. Okay, so how are we going to adjust that tip angle? I'm going to move the jig arm. Okay, as I move that jig arm, it changes the angle that it touches the tip angle that touches the grinder. Okay. Now what happens when I move the basket position? That'll also change the tip angle, won't it? So I have to know that 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 uh, uh, the pivot point has to be in the right place for the tip. But the second part of this puzzle is the side angle and my side angles are tilted in. Now looking at the side angle, you see the side angles are tilted in. Okay, they're not straight up and down. The, the side angles are in, and these are not measurable. So how are we going to change that side angle, whatever I want that, that swept back wing to be? How am I going to set that? Okay, so now you can see I've got the gouge all the way around so it would if it was on it would be grinding the side grind all right now how do I change the side grind I change the pivot point the basket position all right so I have to set the side grind where I want it put the basket position in the right place now when I move the basket what happened it also moved the tip angle. All right, so now I've got to go and recheck and remove the jig arm to change the tip again. I need to correct the tip because I moved the basket position. All right, so it's a little confusing, but what you need to know, the jig arm changes the tip angle the basket position changes the side angle. OK? 
okay? And they both influence each other, so you have to go through that twice. When you move one, it changes the other. When you move the other, it changes the first one again. So you have to go back and do that sequence twice. So I set the tip angle. I set the side angle. I go ahead and set the tip angle again to correct it. And then I look at the side angle again and see if it needs correcting. Okay. Okay, so let's get the grinder on and see if we can see these sparks. Okay, that was a good shot. We could see the sparks coming down the inside of the flute there. What did that tell me? The little area right at the tip where I'm grinding is sharp already, so I want to start to swing my handle. Now I'm going to do this in two passes. I'm going from the tip down around to one side. See the sparks coming down the flute? And we're going to go on the other side. Okay, why am I doing it in two passes like this? So that the handle, I don't have to get it by my tummy. I can have my head right over and see what I'm doing and I can have more control of the touch of how hard I'm pushing against the wheel and it's just leaning it up there very gently and getting it sharp. Now I'm going to show you in real time what it takes to sharpen and this hand underneath is holding it into the, the basket position and this hand, my wrist is just going to roll my wrist and leaning up against the, the grinder and work it through. So. Let's pretend I just gotten done with my uh, last pass on the lathe and I'm going to come over here, put this in here and just touch it very lightly, roll my wrist and I'm sharp, switch other hand, roll my wrist and I'm sharp, that's as long as it takes, okay, quick and easy and fast and accurate. There's two separate things that we need to think about when we sharpen. First is getting the jig set up correctly so that the angles are accurate and you've got the tip angle and the si side angle uh, the way you want it. Uh, my side angles are tilted in quite a bit. Uh, the side angles are not measurable. We can't put a protractor on that so you just have to have uh, a similar gouge to, uh, to know what it looks like. Uh, the tip angle is measurable. Mine's about 60, 62 degrees. Uh, the angle is measured from the flute down. Okay. So the angles are established by setting your jig, and then that's a constant. You don't mess with that. The grind shape is going to happen by where you sharpen it. Okay. And mine has a very very slight arc here if you look at it in the naked eye it almost looks straight uh, some people have a hump on theirs I've decided to take that hump off as it gets in the way of shear scraping and and starting the push cut and things so it's more friendly with the hump gone so I've taken that hump off if you do have a hump on it how you're gonna get the hump off is you grind right here and you leave the rest of it alone Right? If you've got a high spot, you grind there. If you've got a low spot, you leave it alone. Okay? So now it's a matter of keeping that, that little arc. And how am I going to know? Is just by stopping looking at it from the side and look at the shape. If I've got a hump, grind on it. If I get a little divot in there, we don't want to have a little divot in there. Sometimes if we get a little aggressive at the tip, we can have a little divot in there. Okay? Don't want that. So I gotta leave that alone. I'm gonna grind down here until the divot goes away. Alright? So where you grind it and watching those sparks is going to develop the shape. Uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to support our sponsors. See you next time.